What's up, everybody? Welcome to the 335 Continuation Guide. What I'm talking about today is the Nickel 335 base play that we went over in the introduction. We're going to be touching on the Loop Crash 3. Uh, and what I want to quickly show you, I just want to show you right edge pressure, left edge pressure, and double edge pressure. Uh, I'm going to run through the setups twice, and then I'm also going to leave those on the Facebook page for you to access uh, if you need a reference for that. But uh, real quickly here, what we want to do with this uh, setup real quick is you want to have... Uh, you want to come out, and this is the same setup every single time. Every single play that we run, you run this exact setup first before you do anything else. You come out, you base a line, you shift your defensive line to the right, and you spread your linebackers. Every single time, no matter what play you're calling, unless you're calling the 3 3 5 2-man under play, that's the only play that you do not spread your linebackers on. So all the base plays that we run from this, you will spread your linebackers. From that point, if we want to set up right edge pressure, we're going to crash our defensive line down. We're going to globally re-blitz our right of screen outside linebacker. Then we have the freedom to be able to zone everybody on the left side of the field that is blitzing. So we could take Jones, we could put him into a curl flat zone. We can take Perfect, we could put him into a hook zone. And then if we wanted to, you could even take Johnson and potentially put him in a quarterback spy or a flat zone. I will typically just leave him blitzing just because I, I don't think that it gives us enough to warrant not blitzing him for the actual manual setup so I typically will leave him as is but you can do whatever you want and you'll see at the snap of the ball we're gonna get this right edge pressure at the quarterback as you see the right edge pressure loop around and real quick here we're gonna go over this one more time we want to base a line shift our defensive line to the right spread our linebackers crash our defensive line down and then we want to um, globally zone our linebackers, globally blitz the right of screen one if we want to do it like that. You can do it like that. That's just going to save you a step as far as a manual zone of perfect. It's also going to put the middle linebacker in a regular hook zone. So whatever you want, that's kind of as if you if you want it like that or if you wanted it maybe something like this. Maybe this is how they look normally. So maybe you wanted to do something like this because you wanted this exotic hook zone. You know, get a little exotic with the setup. But... I personally think it's just to teach it. It is a little easier to just um, when you when you um, before you globally blitz the right of screen backer to just globally zone them all so that you save saves you a manual step. But if you want to do that, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. And then you just zone Jones manually, and then you have the freedom to use Mal user Maluga in the middle of the field. And you see, we got that right edge pressure at the quarterback. Okay. Now I want to show you the uh, left side left side version of this. The left side version is, is very similar to the right side version and as far as setups goes. Uh, what you want to do is, you want once again, you want to base a line, you want to shift your D-line to the right, you want to spread your linebackers. I personally like to globally zone my linebackers, then I'm going to globally blitz my LOS outside linebacker, and then I'm going to crash my line down. From that point, I now have the freedom to make a couple of other adjustments on the fly, and what I'll often do is take Dunlap and put him into a, a curl flat zone. And then I may base align twice. And you see when you base align twice, the hook zones kind of span out a little bit. And now you have a little bit more of an exotic spread across the board. And you see we're going to get that uh, pressure off the left side of the field. So we'll show you that one more time. One again, we're going to uh, base align. Shift the D-line to the right. Spread your linebackers. Again, I like to personally globally zone my linebackers. And then I'll globally re-blitz the LOS backer. Then I like to crash my line down. Remember, you can zone Dunlap, and then I typically will base the line twice, and you see, should see we get that uh, B gap pressure off that left side. So that's the right and the left. Now I want to show you double pressure. Double pressure is a little bit faster to set up, but you are sending more people. So uh, what we want to do is we want to base the line, um, shift D line to the left, or excuse me, shift D line to the right, spread your linebackers. From that point since you normally use the middle linebacker anyway you want to crash your line down and then just globally reblitz both outside linebackers and this looks creates kind of like a stink pinch look now sometimes what I'll do is I'll man these outside corners up just to kind of because like say they're on a slant or something I'll have a little bit better shot at maybe deterring the throw and then I typically will bring the safety down and get really aggressive with this blitz um, this is just my personality, but has nothing really to do with the setup of the play. It's just kind of some advanced stuff that you can do off of it. And you'll you should see here we get two guys free at the quarterback. 
And as you see, we get a guy free off both edges. Now, the important part about getting a guy free off both edges is the fact that when they block the running back, if, if your opponent is a guy that likes to block the running back maybe on third and short or something, then you could send this double pressure version. Once again, here's the setup. We want to base line, shift our D-line to the right, spread our linebackers, crash our D-line down, re-blitz both of our outside linebackers, and then we can, you know, maybe play a little aggressive on the outside and bring Nelson in because we know this hook zone is going to kind of flutter out to the outside. We can bring Nelson in, play him over the middle, and you should see here that running back is going to pick up the left edge pressure, but we're able to sneak in that right edge pressure off the backside. So guys, that is the nickel 335 loop crash three. All the setups for it, the double edge pressure, the right edge pressure, the left edge pressure. This is a really good base play. It's something that I can kind of come out in oftentimes, especially against three wide receiver sets and higher. That does a nice job. Now, if they're in a pro set, I almost automatically always go to LB Dogs. Uh, just because I, I feel really confident in that play. But again, you do what you want. I personally think this is one of the better plays for three wide receiver sets as far as a base standpoint. And it also does a really good job if you're wanting to send the left edge pressure a little bit more. You can send the left edge pressure against maybe if they're bunched to the right or if they're trips to the right. It does a really good job against that. So that's a couple of notes about the Loop Crash 3. And uh, tomorrow we're going to be talking a little bit more about the...